This is not a review of the Mitner DAC, but rather I want to talk about something I realized while testing this DAC. I had a light bulb moment. I no longer have the DAC, so no B-rolls throughout the video. Now, the reason I am not reviewing it is because I really don't want to talk about how it sounds and all its feature and so forth. You can find that info on written reviews as well as other videos. Now, how do you talk about a $8,000 USD DAC? One thing I try to avoid in my videos is simply saying it is good, you know, without explaining it why. And that's the reason why whenever I listen to something, I always ask the question, what makes it so good? After all, if I take this like $700 SMSL DAC that I just got, I can say it is very good. It feels like a singer is in my room. It gives me goosebumps and it is pretty special. Then I take this $8,000 Meitner DAC, I can say the same thing. It is very good, very special. It makes me feel like the singer is in my room. Now, in the process of trying to figure out what makes this $8,000 DAC so special, it got me thinking, is my system just right? Now, stay with me, I will explain. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with EMM Labs slash Meitner, this is a Canadian company that designs and makes their products here in Canada. EMM Labs, I guess, is the, the more prestigious line, and Meitner Audio is the less expensive line. Well, less expensive, quote-unquote, because this DAC is like eight grand US. Meitner DACs are special in the sense they don't use off-the-shelf DAC chips. Now, for those of you who don't follow me, I've gone through perhaps 20, 30 plus DACs, ranging from 50 bucks to $4,000. Now, if you look at all these DACs uh, from China that measures really well, they're very detailed, transparent, clear, quick, clean, and to some extent, clinical. Not necessary uh, in a bad way. Now, the Meitner DAC is better, but not in the sense that it is more detailed, more transparent, and more blah, blah, blah. So, how does this Meitner DAC beat them? To explain what makes the Meitner DAC so good, I have to step back and tell you a story. Now, I have a friend that lives nearby, and he has a very nice system. Just like most audiophile, the itch to upgrade happens every month, well, every few months. And I love following the evolution of his system. Every upgrade, there was a noticeable change. For example, bass is tighter. Highs are more refined, sound stage is bigger, and so forth. I remember one day when he upgraded a component and invited me over. On that day, I had a realization. I actually preferred the system as a whole a few upgrades ago. Sure, it was not as clean sounding before, nor was the bass as strong, but the system sounded just right before. It was a more enjoyable experience. Well, before the upgrades. For me, the upgrades has gone a bit too far for his room. Now, the Meitner DAC, when compared to the Chinese DACs I have been testing for the last few months, is better in the size of the sound stage. There's more air. There's warmth in the mid-range. Well, because most of these Chinese DACs I've been listening to, they, they lack warmth in the mid-range. You can call it uh, neutral. Well, some would argue it's a question of taste, right? Neutral or warm, which one you prefer? I personally prefer warmth in the mid-range. Next, the Meitner sounds more analog. However, you know what? That is not what makes the Meitner DAC really a wow product. For me, and for me, perhaps only, it is the fact that it sounds just right in my system. The decay of a note, just the right length. The punch of the bass, just right. Not overly strong, nor weak. The sparkling at the top end, not overly bright and fatiguing, nor is it rolled off and dull, just right. Everything that I paid attention to in the presentation, I never once felt like I wish it had a bit more of this, nor did I wish that it has less of that. That is why I love the DAC, and for me, it is my perfect DAC. Now, this is how it sounds in my room and my system. It might not sound just right in your system and your room. Now, my friend Mr. Quad and Mr. Cantor tried it, 
and within minutes they knew the stack was wrong. However, they loved it for different reasons. Well, after all, we have different system, different tastes, and different room. I know we like to talk about DAX, how the treble, mids, bass, dynamics perform, and we always have this idea, more is better. Better SNLR measurements, more detail, more bass, more dynamics, more, more, more. And some of us, what we might not realize is sometimes a bit more can be too much. Can your room handle more bass? Think about that. So that's it. That's my impression of the minor DAC. As I said, not a review. I'm tired of following review formats. And uh, I just want to say what I want to say. Now, over the years, I have a lot of gear come in and out of my place. There are only two times I felt bad when something left my house. The two things that make me feel bad, uh, felt bad, were one, the recently reviewed synthesis A42 Integrated Amp. That is because I don't know if I ever will come across another integrated amp that has a buttery smooth mid range like the one, like that one, right, using KT66. The second thing is the Magnar DAC. Despite having tried 20, 30, maybe more uh, DACs. I don't know if I will ever come across another one that is just perfect in my system. Now, I could have bought it, but the problem with running a YouTube channel is I never get a chance to listen to my own gear. As such, I have made a decision not to keep anything expensive. Now, given this is a short video and we're done, and uh, since we're on the topic of just right, uh, why, don't I, why don't I tell you a story for fun, okay? If you are new to this hobby, you might not know how important synergy is. Now, I have a friend whom I'll call Mr. Kanta, and uh, I call him that because he used to own a pair of Focal Kanta. Now, one day, he got his hand on this older Audiolab CD player, and he thought it was okay for the price. Now, eventually, he decided to sell it, and the night before he sold it, he tested it with a dollar store in the Kinect, just to make sure it's working. The interesting part is, wow, he has never heard the CD player sounded so good in his system. All this time, he was using this CD player with cables that cost thousands of dollars. Yes, you heard me right. And sure, it was more detailed, more transparent, more, more, more. But that cheap $1 cable sounded just right in his system. So instead of spending like five minutes to test that CD ROM, he spent hours listening to it. He said it sounded more analog and smoother with that $1 cable. And uh, as he described, it was just a perfect match. So that goes to show sometimes more does not mean better. Now, keep in mind, his experience with the CD player might not be true if he brought it to your place. Because if you plug it into your system, it might, you know, it might not have that just right uh, synergy. All right, guys, so uh, I'll finish the video with a sound demo since I recorded it way back, and I will compare it to my own reference stack, which is the Exasound E20A. Interestingly, despite this Exasound DAC not measuring well, I prefer it over all the DACs I've gotten recently that measured better. It's because it sounds more analog, and also it has more mid-range warmth. You know what? One day I should make a video on what I think about measurements. Uh, spoilers, I do think it is important. Now, remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time.